Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved in Christ, we are nearing the end of the 12-day season of Christmas. And the message of Christmas is that God entered into our human condition in the person of his Son, known by his human name, Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, took our nature into himself. He became fully human, like us in every way, except that he was without sin. He took on our flesh and blood. And God's word in today's epistle reading tells us that Jesus helps us deal with three great issues of life. Temptation, sin, and death. Temptation. How can I overcome evil and serve God? Sin. How can I be forgiven when I disobey and sin against God? Death. What happens to me when I die? First, Temptation. How can I overcome evil and serve God? God's word tells us because Jesus himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Now, since Jesus never sinned, he was tempted by Satan in ways that you and I cannot begin to understand or even imagine. The devil had to use all his tricks and weapons on Jesus. He doesn't have to do that with us because you and I sometimes give in to temptation. But Jesus never ever disobeyed God's will in any way. So Satan had to go at Jesus with every tactic at his disposal, every weapon in his arsenal. And so Jesus experienced temptation such as we will never know. He understands temptation. He gets it. He was tempted. And he overcame. Since he is our flesh and blood, not plastic and steel, but our flesh and blood, he is able to help us when we are tempted. He is the perfect helper. He's been through it all, and he overcame it all. That is the kind of helper we need. So when you are facing temptation, don't try to go it alone. Please don't say, I can handle this. No problem. I got this. Dear friend, those words are music to the devil's ears because the Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit precedes a fall. So don't say, oh, I can handle this. You can't do it. And the good news is you don't have to. Turn to Jesus for help. Like, Lord... You know what I'm going through right now. You've been there. Lord, give me strength for this situation. More than that, Lord, I'm asking you to, to be my strength. Work your strength in me. Lord, I'm turning to you for help to overcome. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You know, there's a joy. There's a joy that comes with obeying God, walking in the will of God. There's a joy that comes with that, that nothing in this world can match. The joy of obedience. 
But what happens when we fail? What happens when we disobey? Sin is the second great issue in which Jesus helps us. How can I be forgiven when I disobey and sin against God? Now remember, Jesus is our flesh and blood, not plastic and steel. So he is able to be our authentic substitute in the sight of God. Jesus paid the price for sin that we deserve to pay. Condemnation and separation from God. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, he was not getting what he deserved. He was getting what we deserve. As our text says, he was making atonement for the sins of the people. That is, he was presenting to God the perfect sacrifice that God required. And the sacrifice was himself. He was both the priest and the sacrifice there on the cross. He was paying the penalty for our sins. He was suffering because of the evil we have done and the good that we have failed to do. His death satisfied the justice of God. And because of his sacrifice, there is forgiveness for our sins. God's son paid for our sins. His flesh was pierced. His blood was shed for you. And in a few moments, we will hear our Lord say, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And when you hear those words, our Lord Jesus Christ wants you to take them to heart and take his words personally because he will be speaking to you. Now you may say, I have sinned greatly. I'm not sure God can forgive me for what I have done. Dear friend, please listen. There is no sin that is greater than God's Son. There is no sin that means more to God than the cross of his Son. The Bible says the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Cleanses us. Does not say some of us, a few of us, many of us, or most of us. Us, meaning all of us. From all sin. Not some, most, many, a few, all sin. That's what the Bible says. That's the promise of God. Guess what? God is not going to make you an exception to his promise. He's not going to say, well, I didn't mean you. Or you. Or you. The blood of Jesus, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. including yours and mine. So, dear friend, when you sin, don't try to deny it. Don't despair because of it. Do not deny. Do not despair. Rather, repent and believe. Here's what that sounds like. Lord, I am truly sorry. I ask your forgiveness. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, paid the price for my sins. I gratefully receive your forgiveness. Help me to live in a way that pleases you and honors you.
And finally, there is the issue of death. What happens to me when I die? God's word tells us by his death, Jesus broke the power of death and freed those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Now, death is Satan's ultimate weapon. That's a fact. Here's the other fact. Jesus defeated it for you. And since Jesus shared our flesh and blood, he really did die on that cross. He really did die. And he really did rise from the dead, never to die again. Because of the sin we still carry in us, we still must face physical death in this world. But because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, death for the Christian, for the one who believes in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, death for that person is not final defeat, but rather the doorway to eternal victory. Jesus is with you now on earth and he is preparing a place for you in heaven. He says, because I live, you too shall live. Because I live, you too shall live. And he means every word of that promise, every word of it. So, do not be afraid to die. Jesus has faced death and has overcome it. And he is with you to help you do the same. You know, your grave, your grave will be a second-hand grave. Because Jesus has been there before you. And when you close your eyes for the last time on this earth, you will open them to see the glorious face of Jesus. So at your death, you can say as Jesus said on the cross, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Thank God the three great issues of temptation, sin, and death have been addressed and resolved by Jesus because the eternal Son of God became our flesh and blood. Because of his holy life, we have the power to overcome temptation. Because God's Son died on the cross in our place, God no longer holds our sins against us. Because Jesus rose again, death is not defeat, but the doorway to eternal victory. What greater gifts could we ever hope for? What more could we want for Christmas? And that question reminds me of something I read recently titled, what do you want for Christmas? I thought it would be fitting to read this at the close of this Christmas season. What do you want for Christmas? It's a common question, the author wrote. Some respond with very long lists. Some people just shake their head and say, oh, nothing. But there's one who always knows what he wants for Christmas, and it's always the same thing. Jesus, what do you want for Christmas? And Jesus answers, you. When I read that, I thought of this. You know, Jesus paid the ultimate price for you. That's how much he wants you and me. He gave his holy life for you. I want you to remember this. Your life 
is worth the life of Christ. That's how precious, how valuable you are to God. So when you, if this ever happens, that you're feeling worthless and ashamed when the world is calling you a nobody and nobody seems to care. Remember that Almighty God wants you and loves you and cares for you so much that he sent his beloved son into this world for you. That is why he became one of us. That's why he became our flesh and blood. And that, dear friends, is Christmas. May the peace of God that passes all understanding stand guard over our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.